our third day of Draft 101. Tim Benz on Breakfast with Benz along with Matt Williamson, kind enough to join me as he does every year for a full week of draft preview. A little early this week because I'm on vacation and we got to fill the time and this is a perfect way to do it. And Matt's great at breaking things down. We're, we're sort of setting a foundation this year for draft coverage as opposed to topping it off. We've done it later, closer to the draft than previous years, but I think Matt, right now, people are getting to know a lot of these prospects. Mm -hmm. We're getting out of free agency, into draft prep, and that brings us right to the third category today, the offensive line. There's a lot of Steelers fans that would love to see the Steelers go tackle at number 17. Would you like that? I would, but there's only two names I would do it at, to be honest with you, and that's Ohio State's Paris Johnson Jr. and Georgia's Broderick Jones. And to me, those guys are run to the podium. You're very fortunate if they get there. There's a lot of landmines between 9 and 16 where they could land. Um, they're the best pure tackles. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are like, well, what about Skoronsky from Northwestern? I think he's the best blocker in this whole draft. I think he has the best offensive line tape in this whole draft. But, but the Steelers were so aggressive getting guards. I think they have to be prototypical tackle shopping and really that's it i mean the six five plus long arm look the park guys and as good as skaronsky is his arm length is very short he's very stubby for a left tackle and if they didn't go get all these guards i'd be fine with it because he will play somewhere on the front five but if he's not a tackle then you're stuck with five guards instead of you know an extra tackle is there a corner that we talked about that you like enough to say, take that guy instead of Broderick Jones or Paris Johnson? No. The, okay. I mean, not that it's reasonable because I think Gonzalez would be gone. Longer. Yeah, I think those two are long gone. So, okay. no. I mean, it, I, I'd be, I think there's less than 50% chance that Johnson or Jones is there, to be honest with you. I'm leaning that way, too, which brings mm -hmm. me to Dewan Jones from Ohio State. Interesting. Who's huge. Um, and I, I'm not saying that he's better than, you know, some other guys like who Harrison Wright uh, from Oklahoma and Tennessee, mm -hmm. respectively. A lot of people like Mock from North Dakota State. Um, Jalen Duncan's a name that's come up from Maryland as well. Yeah. But I just hear the Steelers connected to Jones so much. Um, that batch of names that I just rattled through. Do you like any of them before Dewan Jones? Would you put Dewan Jones third or fourth on your tackle list? What do you think? Uh, Wright is my third tackle. Pure, I mean, and I called Skaronsky a you're guard. Moving, yeah, you're moving Skaronsky out, right? Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. from a Steeler perspective because of what they need. But the whole left tackle, right tackle, you know, that has really been overblown because Steeler fans know right tackles have to blo block T.J. Watt. You know I mean? like, But Wright struggled at left tackle and excelled at right tackle. So I think he's only a right. And if you draft him, then you're moving chooks. And I don't know if that's the smartest move either, because it seems like the right side of the line for Pittsburgh is very stable and trustworthy. So I don't know that I'm drafting pure right tackles. Um, what I don't know is the Wad Jones looks like a prototypical pure right tackle. He's the hugest human being you've ever seen. Paris Johnson's on the other side, who's the light-footed pass protector guy. But if you drafted DeWad Jones, and really any of these guys for that matter, and I'm thinking more 32 than 17 on DeWan. Okay. Um, I think what you do with that guy is incorporate him as the extra tight end a lot. We know you can live with Dan Moore. Maybe it's not perfect, but semi-redshirt a guy like DeWan Jones and put him in goal line, put him in – 10 snaps a game as a six offensive lineman, something they used to do a lot before last year as he learns left tackle. And he's Orlando Brown. You know, everyone looked at him and said, boy, he's big and slow. He has to be a right tackle. Well, Orlando Brown did his best work on the left side. And the whole thing of the light-footed left tackle and the mauler right tackle was kind of a thing of the past. So one of the beauties of where the Steelers sit is, some of these quote projects, they can learn a little slower than just throw him in there and he'll beat out Dan Moore. Do they think they need a tackle as much as so many of us do? I think so. I really do. And that's why I keep coming back to Dewan Jones, though, is these 
free agent acquisitions indicate that me, they want size, they want physicality, they want to bang their heads and beat you up late into the fourth quarter. Like Antoine Harrison, who you mentioned from Oklahoma, is more of the just under 300 pound, light foot, pass protector type. And I think they want physicality. I look at their scouting and I feel like they're tempted by the tackles. I don't even know if we should talk about guards. We'll get to that whole time. I don't think it, I mean, almost all the interior guys to me might be off the table at this point. Because of what they did in free agency. Yeah. I mean, they they may have to move on from a guard or trade a guard. And some of those guys have center capabilities. So I think it's almost tackle or bust up front. Do you like Bergeron out of Syracuse? I liked him when he was there. A lot. Yeah, I, I very much do. I thought he was very impressive since the season. Some that don't love him think maybe he's a high-end guard. I think he's a tackle. And that's real easy in the scouting circles to say, well, he, you know, he's not light enough on his feet, to, to, so he has to go into guard. But what people don't realize is every Sunday – 64 starting tackles go out there, whether we like it or not. And 35 of them probably shouldn't be playing tackle. So Bergeron, to me, will probably last and excel a tackle. And he has some physicality to him, too. I mean, uh, he would be a nice addition. Do you get the sense that the two guards that they signed were brought here to start. I mean, I could see Dotson being squeezed out, but are they trying to squeeze out Daniels? Are they trying to make him a center? What do you make of how they addressed the guard situation and underscoring what you had previously said? Is, is there a move to be made? Are they trying to trade a guy? I think Dotson's on his way out. He only has one year left on his contract. His best games are very high. His worst games are very low. And inconsistency for a guard makes people crazy. I mean, he makes some mental errors. Um, not that he's a bad player. I just think you're looking for consistency, trustworthiness there. Uh, Solomalo is a starter all day long. I think Daniels is a starter all day long. Both of them could kick into center, but I think they're happy enough with Cole, as am I that the in interior is Daniels at right, Cole at center, Solomalu at left, and now you have enviable depth with these other guys and maybe a trade piece in Dotson. And if something should go wrong injury-wise, right, they could move Siamalu or Daniels in-game to center if they had to, right, and then put Herbig in at guard? Yes, and Herbig has actually played some center as well. Um, what's interesting to me about Solomalu is – that Eagles line was so good that everyone raves about his unbelievable football IQ and he could do anything. And when he went to Oregon state, he was a center. Yeah, but he's not better than, you know, Jason Kelsey, who's the best center we've seen. Yeah. So he's not going to move him. He's also not as big and thick and mauling as people realize he has really long arms. He's almost six, four. I wonder in a pinch, could he be a tackle? Cause he's a little lot lighter on his feet than a guy like Herbig. Who's a, masher all day long and another option is that they do get a legit one starting first round if they get a 17 pick or even the 32 maybe they could start that guy at left tackle and then more can play guard too right? right right yeah absolutely i think more is best suited at guard so in a way they have five good guards which you know i think they're just getting good offensive linemen and figured out a camp and i don't know if your listeners understand this but i think it was 46 snaps they missed amongst their starting five offensive linemen last year. Like 98% of the snaps yeah, they were not dealt with. with They had no injuries up front. I mean, the offense as a, as a whole was the least injured offense in the league led by the offensive line, and that's just not going to happen. So we didn't have to see the depth, which, who thankfully so, because the depth last year could have been frightening. The only interior guys that I've heard them connected to were John Michael Schmitz, the center mm -hmm. from Minnesota, yeah. and Luke Weipler from Ohio State. And I think they just invited him out to dinner because they were looking at the other two tackles and they didn't want the kid to be to feel left out. Is he going to play center, do you think? In the I think so. I think oh, both right. those guys can do both. You know, these Big Ten centers you mentioned, Joe Titman's another name to know from Wisconsin. He's a 6'6 six, six center. I, I just think, as we talked about, with all the center versatility they have, 
that interior O line makes little sense to me. Um, you know, the, the, maybe the best guard in the draft is Osiris Torrance, and I think they're bringing him in for a a, a, a visit, which. I don't understand at all because he's a pure guard. So I hope they're not just collecting a hundred guards, <laughs> you know. I mean, but I, I do like Michael Schmitz a lot. Okay. When we come back, we have two more days to go. So when we come back on Thursday, we're going to get to some of the skill position guys. In fact, we're going to get to the pass catchers next. We'll do wide receivers and tight ends. The Steelers could use some depth at wide receiver. How high do they go to get a wide receiver and can they be tempted for a number two tight end, especially with some of Pat Fryermuth's injury issues that he's gone through already? We'll talk about those topics for our Thursday post for Draft 101 with Matt Williamson right here on the Breakfast with Ben's podcast.